Hello and welcome to the final talk in this year's Belfast Food Festival. I'm really happy to be joined by three brilliant women who are all experts in their field. Anna Kaiser Rastenberger from Finland, Stella Nantongo from Uganda and Trish Lam from Ireland. So this talk is concerned with promoting your work, which is an issue of perennial importance for emerging photographers and artists. Um, and one in which, you know, the normal rules of engagement have perhaps been thrown into a bit of disarray by COVID. So I'm really keen to hear what each of them has to say. Um, and I think it's really interesting how they all move between, you know, various areas in the field. So between education, between festivals, between institutions. Um, so uh, I'll introduce each of them. Anna Kaiser Rastenberger is the or has been the chief curator at the Finnish Museum of Photography. Um, she has a PhD on um, international internationalizing Finnish art and teaches currently at the Academy of Fine Arts in Helsinki. And she uh, set up the Festival of Political Photography and she also runs marathons in her, for fun in her spare time. Uh, and the first time I met her, it was the morning after doing one. Um, and um, so, and Stella Nantongo is um, program, program coordinator for the Uganda Press Photo Award set up in 2012. She's really interested in visual storytelling, social commentary, um, and promoting Ugandan photo talent. Uh, Trish Lam is the co-curator of the Gallery of Photography in Dublin and runs the Emerging Artist Award and has been heavily involved in the Belfast Photo Festival. And I think a lot of her insight can be seen in its ongoing success. So, um, so everybody, please add your questions to the Q&A as we go along, and I'll put them to the panel. Um, but first of all, welcome, Trish. Okay, so can I share screen? Thanks, Claire. Um, can I share the screen? Can you hear me? Can I, can you, I can share the screen. Okay. So um, it's really lovely to be part of this event. Um, we're big fans here in Dublin of Michael Weir and his work uh, with Belfast Photo Festival and kudos to Michael for organising this festival, which is looking at women's practice. Um, it's something that we ourselves are very interested in, in gallery photography in Dublin, where I work. Um, and we're looking forward to showing Claire Gallagher's work in December when we open up again as part of um, our Creative Europe a Woman's Work project, which is organised with five partners. And this is the culmination um, of that project. So it's, it's lovely to be here and it's lovely talking about promoting artists' work. Uh, first of all, I have to confess that um, I'm lucky to be going first because a lot of what I'm saying I would imagine will be replicating comments that Anna Kaiser and Stella might be making but they'll also have their own perspectives on it so um, a lot of the areas I'll be covering will, might be obvious to people you know it's it's pretty much down to common sense in a lot of cases. So I'm not sure that I'll have any particular novel insights to impart, but I'm happy to share our experience um, from the island of Ireland, working both in gallery photography in Dublin, but also working with Belfast Photo Festival. So I'm just going to run through a few just quick ideas we had. So. Um, I was talking to Michael and getting his input into this as well. So I've got my BPF recommendations. Um, but what Michael astutely, sorry about that, um, identified the need to think about promoting your work before it's ready to be shown. So in that process of developing your work and things you might want to think about, even at the outset of, of choosing a body of work. I mean, we, we don't exist in isolation. We make our bodies of work with in, in a broader context. So it's useful to think about issues that might address local, national or international interests. It, it's important to develop a network to sustain you when you're building your work. And I think that that's something that women are particularly good at or that is particularly useful to women. I think it's really important that people take their own power and that they form networks and they, they work with people they trust to get feedback 
and criticism of their work, especially when you leave college, because I think that that um, that support that you get in, in trying to tease out ideas, it's often more difficult when you leave college to sustain your practice. So I think in that development phase of work, those kind of structures can be really useful. It's important to develop your style, your voice. I don't you like the word brand. I know it's 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 a word that, that some people use, but I think it's really important to keep that you're an artist, that you're authentic, you're not selling a product. It's not you know, some neoliberal project. Um, it's it's important to to balance your work with 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 this, a short text. Not every photographer is a writer, nor should they be a writer. So if that's something you need help with, work beyond the photography bubble and work with artists and 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 pull in other skills. And if you can't do it yourself, you know, partner up with somebody. And the, I think the final point in kind of that whole broader aspect of de of developing your work and trying to build and sustain your practice is is keep the faith it's a long game so i think when it comes to promoting your work it's really important to remember that often there isn't always an immediate feedback that sometimes it can take months or years for some type of promotion that you've been engaged with to actually garner results and Michael's top tip was a photographer is more likely to see success by promoting a complete body work. So, so don't be too, too quick to go out there and say this is finished. You know, trust yourself, trust your image making, hone your work and wait till it's ready to be shown. So what works? Portfolio reviews work. This Belfast Photo Festival portfolio review. When you're showing your work, I think it's best to keep it keep it tight you've got usually a short period of time around 20 minutes um so keep it focused don't try and show a too broad a range and this is me speaking from a gallery context but don't keep it to one or two bodies of work don't be disappointed if you don't get an immediate response you don't need to spend lavish amounts of money in fact it can be sometimes off-putting if you're a portfolio reviewer and people feel that they're giving you prints or giving you beautifully presented portfolio boxes. You're just there to see the works. You're just there to see the images. All that other stuff is superfluous and expensive. So don't let that put you off. And Michael's top tip was research the people you're going to meet. Get an idea of what interests them. Because for me, working in a photography gallery, you know, we see lots of great bodies of work, but we're limited by capacity in what we can show. And so it, we have to choose and we can't do everything we'd like to show or we might have focused on one particular area over the last say, three or four years and we may not be interested in that type of work because we've already shown it so as an artist it's important that you don't feel rejected because your work hasn't been picked up by somebody there are lots of reasons why you may not be getting success with your work beyond the work itself so networking Remember this in real life. Um, it's important to to be active, to be involved. If we want people to support and fund photography, we, we have to represent. We can't just turn up to the events that we're interested in or that we're participating in. It's, it's important that we represent. It's important that we show that there's an audience for things, that we take part, that we, we, we have a voice. I think when you're running, when you're on the other side of things and you're running events, you really appreciate when people ask questions, you notice the people who ask questions, you remember them. So all that kind of thing about taking part and actively taking part and, and, and joining in and, and taking your own power and having a voice is really important. Um, networking is, is really useful in terms of sustaining your practice. You know, you find out about grants, there, there's networking online, but there's networking in real life. Set up your Google alerts, have collectives who support each other, apply to open submissions, get feedbacks, all those kind of things. But often it's your immediate circle, I think, of contacts that will help you with that. Social media is increasingly important. And obviously we've seen that with, with post COVID world. Um, this is a social media campaign for our recent diversity commissions in Dublin. So that's, that's really great opportunity for us to promote new talents and a much more diverse um, set of artists that we have in usual. So that's gonna change the face of the representation of Ireland. So that's something that we're really excited about. This was one thing that we did during the um, COVID-19 lockdown, and this was a, a useful way for 
artists who often were kind of out of the usual rhythm of things. Um, so we invited artists, it was riffing off the mass observation project, we invited artists to share photographs that kind of made visible their experience of COVID-19 lockdown. So there was a nice way for people to keep in touch with each other. And we worked with partners in the UK and in, in Finland and in uh, Australia. And out of that, there's some new opportunities have come through. There's being some projects curated. So that even though usually um, Instagram in particular is photographer's choice and often it's more of a notebook um, or a way to, to present work that's realized. But in this case, it was a different kind of a thing. So that was interesting to see how that worked. They weren't really intended to be fully formed bodies work, but nonetheless, it does build up a nice representation of what we've all been through and what we're currently going through. So there, just a, a quick overview of some of the work in that. And then Claire was talking about COVID-19 and the world we're in and what works. And so this was um, a project we did with Maria Kapieva. And Maria Kapieva is a really good example of a woman who's really good at networking, promoting her work, promoting other people's work, having a voice within the broader, you know, kind of photography world. You know, she's an educator, she's an activist, she's, she's, she, and she's also got a really good graphic identity. So I think she really carefully curates her presentations of her work. So this was, we had planned to do our show in March and at the very last minute, we had to pull the exhibition. So we had to very quickly translate into an online expression. So this was Maria, the launch of Maria's photo books. And I suppose the one point with photo books is they are marvellous. They're maybe the, the top of the, the pyramid in terms of promoting your work. But, the, you know, a lot of artists um, maybe focus too much on, on doing large runs of photo book and end up bankrupting yourself. So I think, yes, publish, but carefully and slowly, because there's a lot of photo books in the world and a lot of them don't get seen. So this was a talk we did with Shoya Mavin from PhotoWorks. And again, it was really nice to bring all these women together. And the whole Zoom thing, I think, has been a great way to um, network, network beyond, especially you're an island nation like Ireland. It's, it's been really good at building up new networks. And I suppose in some ways it's validated these platforms that were kind of a nuisance before. But I think now we've all become much more accustomed to them. And I know it's it's different in in when you're on a larger continent, but when you're an island, you really feel sometimes that lack of opportunity to physically see work. So to be able to share and work more, I think, I think we've benefited a bit here from that. So I think that's been really interesting and trying to learn how to do it, investing in new ways of doing it and VR and AR and XR um, is a whole new frontier that we're kind of exploring. So I want to just kind of point to the, an example of some women in Ireland who are really good at networking with each other. And, and it's Mandy O'Neill, Kate Nolan, and Dragana Juricic. And, and they, along with other women who would be kind of, I suppose, mid-career or established artists, are really good at supporting each other, cross-promoting each other. They have a really good profile. They have a really nice tone. They're supportive. They're mature in what they in, in how they present themselves. And I think they're a really good example of, of a network of women who help cross promote. And it's a really nice collegiate way of promoting each other's work. And I've got the wrong, I've, sorry, I have the wrong, wrong names in those. John, this new, um, this is a diversity commission. Uh, Jalen's also one of our emerging artists. Um, so she's an example of a Chinese Irish woman who's coming to live in Ireland. And it's very much, uh, she's a mother. So it's a very, it's very nice to see this emerging artist who's more mature making work around the family space, which is something that Claire highlighted in her talk. Ala Bashir. And then this is Michael's way, I suppose, of dealing with the, the new now. Um, this is the work of Neve Smith, 
we saw Neve's work at a portfolio review in Belfast Photo Festival, I think it was last year. And, you know, you don't have anything to offer at the time. You, um, you see work, you like it, but you remember it. And you, you think sometimes you might not remember, but in, in our case, you, you, it does lodge somewhere. So when Michael was looking for work that might work in this context, in the Botanic Gardens, it was nice to be able to kind of suggest Neve's work with it. And that's an example of, of work that you, you see and you remember and nothing happens maybe immediately, but further down the line, opportunities come. So I think that points back to the point of keep going, keep at it, be persistent. This is Neve's Instagram feed. And then finishing with an octopus because an octopus is always a good way to end. So this is Yvette Monaghan's Octopolis work. And this is in Donegal Street, which is on the River Lagan in Belfast. Um, and Yvette took part in a great talk with Claire the other night. So that's it for me. And, and going forward, I suppose, what it, in terms of gallery photography, we're in the process and have been for the last four or five years of moving to become Ireland's Museum of Contemporary Photography. So that will greatly enhance our ability to show a broader range of photographers to promote artists to international standards to create large thematic retrospective shows um, next year we're launching national photography collection and then we're looking forward to working with belfast photo festival Belfast Exposed Source magazine to develop opportunities to showcase photography from the island of Ireland, especially um, find new ways to deal with the challenges that are coming down the line with Brexit. So that's me. Um, um, so we've got Stella Nantongo speaking next. Welcome, Stella. Stella, you're on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Stella Nantong. I'm the program coordinator for the Uganda Press Photo Award. So I'm going to approach this topic um, from the side of how we are or how we adapted to the whole COVID situation. Um, so um, a little bit about uh, the Uganda Press Photo Award. Um, it was created in uh, 2012, and uh, our core goal was to actually offer a platform where Ugandan and East African photographers can receive support and con connect, learn, and grow. Um, so how we do this is basically we run an annual um, annual competitions uh, where we, um, like the Uganda Press Photo Award, the East African Photography Award and the Young Photographer Award, um, which is usually um, culminates into an exhibition. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we were unable to do this. Um, we, also, we also run um, workshops, seminars, photographer talks, panel discussions, and portfolio reviews. Um, so to get a little bit into um, how we actually did um, kind of changing the way we're doing things this year. Um, as we all know, everyone kind of after the lockdown, we all kind of went into the whole online platform and just using Zoom for everything. Um, so initially uh, as a way of getting people or keeping people active, we started with a, a program where it was just encouraging um, because we are mostly an education platform and we work with a lot of students. It was just to encourage them to still keep active and keep their mind focused. And also because uh, we were working on our platform, just get their work out there and the one simple hashtag and just get the whole community active. Um, with the annual competitions we have, um, we still went ahead and actually we got some, um, we're a bit worried that everything wouldn't work out fine considering the whole COVID situation, but we actually did um, get quite a few submissions. I will get into that a bit later, um, but that is another way that uh, people usually use to get um, their work or to promote their work or to showcase their work because a lot of people do keep an eye out on who is being highlighted through these different competitions. 
Um, we also have a lot of workshops and uh, seminars that we did um, run during the whole uh, COVID period. And this was still a way of not only showcasing the people working within the dis different spheres and what their talents are, but also to, again, education is our main platform really. Um, get uh, people to just keep learning and also just keep shooting. Um, we, um, sorry, we had uh, the, our fresher course on how to shoot and we, did share everything that came through that um, workshop online on our platform. And we partnered up with some other people to actually share the work as well. Um, influencers are big things in, um, in my country. So that is uh, something that I don't know if it's a big thing in Ireland, uh, but over here, it's something that we tap into um, as a way of just getting people more active and getting work out there. Um, so photographers talks. Still another way we use the platform to just highlight and spotlight the different talents um, from Uganda and uh, from East Africa as well. Um, this year we managed to get uh, Barbara Minishi, who's a Kenyan photographer, to just talk, talk us through her work and um, also um, artist and uh, photographer Canon Griffin. Um, most of these are actually available on our Facebook page, so if you do want to check out what they are showing, um, feel free to visit. Um, panel discussions, um, that is another way that we do try to put as much work, as much focus, as much spotlighting on the talents that we have um, from the region. Um, moving on, portfolio reviews. Um, I think this is a very important aspect that we do, we run every year. Um, it usually comes along with the um, exhibition, the annual exhibition after we announced the winning, uh, the winners of our competitions. Um, but this year, again, due to the whole COVID situation, it happened online. While this was kind of constraining and took us away from how we normally do things, it was still um, in a way kind of open gets for us, open doors for us, because we were able to get um, people that we normally wouldn't have uh, participating in our uh, panel discussions. Uh, we've got uh, some people from Format Festival, we've got some people from Mail and Gary, and we've got some people from um, Market Photo from South Africa. So it was just um, Nella Institute from Nigeria, and we just opened it up to all photographers on the continent. It was a bit overwhelming, but um, it was still, uh, I think it's a very good networking opportunity between um, our photographers within the region and um, or any editors, curators, or um, stakeholders within the industry. Um, one of the things that I've found uh, very important in uh, while talking about promoting work is basically just stay connected. And that is something that we've worked hard on this year. And we've been doing uh, actively trying to get people to um, keep an online presence going. And this year we actually did partner up with the Zura Foundation Zurico. Um, it's basically an online website system um, and they do provide um, access to some of our photographers from the region. And we also partnered with them to just um, run this series of seminars, which was basically about how to get your work out there. Um, but again, we are approaching this from an educational standpoint, how to understand yourself, how to build websites, how to market yourself, pitching. Um, building networks, um, making sure that you actually take the opportunities that are out there from awards to festivals to um, any educational um, talks that are out there like this one, for example, um, just to connect um, using grants that are open to all and just putting your work as out there as possible. And so using, um, again, because we are clearly online, we just opened up all our events um, to anyone who was interested on the continent and just um, really opened our doors. Um, so um, for most of the people who were, um, for most of the people who were part participating in our um, annual competition, the East African Photography Award was essentially just about um, the winners were mostly um, COVID stories. And 
using this platform, we were able to just share stories or insights into how these photographers were documenting um, their situation. And the winner of it all um, of the East African Photography Award was uh, Godwin Odiambo. And uh, his story was essentially reinventing and adapting through coronavirus. And I guess this is another way of me putting it out there that um, using such platforms is another way to put your work out there because I'm now sharing it with all of you guys. Um, just a little bit of um, the work that he did on this story. Um, it was basically documenting the way people were handling the COVID situation in Kibera in Kenya. Um, this is a bit of a snippet um, of what his whole story is and most of it should be available on our website, um, ugandapestphoto.org. Um, this is just Godwin. Now moving on, um, there's also another story from Kabir Danji, another photographer from Kenya. And he basically documented his um, quarantine period because once the lockdown came around, he was stuck in, was following a story in Ethiopia and then coming back, he ended up being stuck in a quarantine zone. And uh, he just basically took his camera and uh, shared a bit of um, what isolation was like um, during that period. Again, this is just a short bit about the story. There's more of it on our website. Um, another is um, Katumba Badru uh, from Uganda, who documented sleeping in the market. Um, basically, during the lockdown, um, the government, uh, the president of Uganda decreed that um, people who, essential workers who were working in the markets uh, couldn't move about because um, they wanted to contain the spread of uh, the disease. But um, people ended up having to actually sleep in the markets and uh, Katuma Badru actually went ahead and uh, documented that whole experience. Again, there's more of it um, happening, uh, more of it that you can see on our website. Um, so moving forward, um, we at the Uganda Press Photo Award will still um, continue and we are still continuing with uh, the trainings that we are doing just to get people to um, understand how to not only be better photographers, but also how to navigate um, the industry. And um, we're just doing it a bit safer, uh, um, but uh, we'll move forward and um, do our best to educate and share as much of their work as possible. Uh, most of the other stuff um, we'll actually get into once um, Anna has also had a chance to share her presentation. And that's it for me. Thank you very much, Stella. Um, so next is Anna Kaiser Rastenberger. Thank you. Ooh. Okay, Stella, are you still sharing your screen? No, wait. Okay. Thank you, Stella and Chris. It's, it's really a privilege to talk after you because I could delete it, uh, many of my slides after your not to, as Chris said, that not, not to duplicate and not to repeat so many things. But um, my perspective uh, here is to kind of a, a bit twofold it. Firstly, I, I talk from the perspective of a teacher. I'm, I'm teaching a professor of exhibition studies and speciality at the Uni Arts Academy of Fine Arts, Helsinki. And uh, uh, as part of my work, I do exhibitions together with students. We, we understand exhibitions like super widely. It's not only doing things on gallery spaces, it's doing things on online, uh, public sphere, publication, everything with kind of all those places where art becomes public in our contemporary societies. And uh, then uh, I also, I'm uh, responsible of Praxis Studies, which is a MA program, two years MA program for curators. So that's also like super privileged position to work in a position where I can uh, train or educate curators together with artists. And I very briefly just first say 
like a, what I do because then it's you understand better my perspective also to this this promoting. So as a teacher and as following young artists and, and students and um, students to become artists, what I also I would like to emphasize that while you are studying and while you are working together with your colleagues, other students or young uh, professionals, create your peer groups, like create your own support groups and find people with who you want to work with. Because that's super important. Uh, it's quite often what we see as uh, teachers that students are really like doing greatly when they are at school and then all of a sudden after the school there is a massive gap. You don't, you cannot access anymore to the uh, devices and facilities and, and actually you need to you need to pay for your studio and everything. So please create some kind of a support groups that will help you after your study years. And also because it's something that many, many young artists used to tell me is that they need feedback. So at the school you get feedback from your professors and in classes, but after. So make sure that you will get feedback when when you finish your studies. And then work together. That's, that's I would say like uh, all the time, like when you are developing your work, as was already mentioned, when you do it, do it together with your peers and get feedback, talk about your work, share your work, don't work alone because then, then you can, it doesn't mean when you get feedback, it doesn't mean that you, you need to change everything, but it's, it's really, I have found it really important and I, in my opinion it's very often that that's the point when when the works from my perspective from curators perspective are really developing and as I said that I'm, I'm running the program for curators and that's also very interesting perspective to see how curators as kind of a mediators art mediators or like formally they or we were called gatekeepers, which is a word that I don't, I don't like myself, but mediators, art mediators, um, they are also shy. So don't be afraid to approach young curators. Invite them to see your work, invite them to, uh, for a studio visit, create opportunities, like a create, like a organized portfolio reefs yourself, invite young curators to see your work and what what we have done in our school while i've been i've been responsible for this program uh curator students are studying together with art students so that means that they are sharing classes they are sharing projects it's very rare that curators are curating artists in this kind of a very conventional sense. So most of the time there is a project or there is a space or there is a platform that artists and curators start working together. And that's, that's also something that I have found really uh, relevant and productive way of kind of a, for the future, because those are the kind of a relationships and networks that last after the study years. But then kind of my other leg and my other perspective at the moment is that um, at the same time when I'm working as a professor, I'm the artistic director and, and also doing a lot of things for the Festival of Political Photography. It's a small festival which we started 2015 and uh, no, 2014, and on next year, we're gonna have our fifth edition. And it's a, it's a small festival which is dedicated to this course about images that kind of are um, willing to make change or have some kind of an interesting perspective uh, to the world. And uh, what is specific to our festival that we are not actually looking for this kind of a young emerging talents that every time when we are presenting images and we are talking about photographic images, we are not only talking about what do they represent, but we are talking about 
what are the circumstances that made those images possible. So it's also trying to open up that what are the structures, institutional and societal structures behind the photographic project. And um, we invite uh, artists for our festival, but as already was mentioned, this kind of a power of social media and power of this kind of a making your work and, and you as artist and photographer uh, present online environment like a, that also applies to this kind of our small festival. We try to do a lot of promotion online. We time to time create memes. This is not our created by our own, but this kind of a, all kind of a, uh, presence on social media and Tris already said that it is very important when you are doing when you are posting images of your project on social media it's also very important that you are um, active in attending discussions and you are commenting on other um, accounts and you are when there are online discussions you are active there because that's that's uh, something that at least I have paid attention that some of the photographers that has been very active in our festivals uh, social media accounts or discussions we've had online it's it has been like a um, created this kind of relationship that we, we ended up working together later on and uh, next edition we've worked different Theme, like thematically on our festival, we worked on on post food, all kind of uh, structures related to food industry. We worked on uh, migration. We worked on um, generational kind of a how how certain things go from generation to another. And next edition, now we're going to work on kind of technology and emotions or fragility or then ghost. We haven't decided that we are now kind of thinking then what's the, what's the next uh, topic for our. And then this is, this is what I made for you for this. This is actually a paper which was, I got it from my colleague, artist and educator Ofri Kani, who is a London-based uh, performance artist and it's kind of a it's attributed it's it's kind of a list to do list or rules attributed to John Cage but actually created by sister Corita Kent as part of her teaching project uh, in 1960s and then I appropriated it for this purpose and here are some rules that I I personally find important when you are thinking of promotion and uh, I'm a bit uh, hesitant uh, in relation to this whole word promotion because I think it's um, we should probably think of a bit differently. We should think that there is a certain kind of a media platform or media space in in um, in our information scene, and it's really lacking the voice of artists, and it's only like a you are only doing a favor if you are kind of a making your voice heard. So think promotion like that, that our society needs the voice of artists. And uh, it's very important that we have like uh, media coverage, which is related to culture. We have discussion about photography. We have discussion about art. So you are only doing a favor for the whole society when, when you are promoting yourself. So rule one, it's like a find a place you trust and then try trusting it for a while. So I, I correct it or I change it like a, find a project you trust and then try trusting it for a while. So do long term project. And it was kind of the same thing that Chris already mentioned that develop your project. Don't rush. You will. Uh, sometimes it's really, really worth thinking over the project. Rule two, uh, general duties of an artist. So pull everything out of your mediator 
do your homework. So when you go to portfolio meetings, uh, do your homework. Find out to who you will be talking to. What kind of things he, she or they has been interested before? Uh, like what kind of work might be working with this person? So and remember that it's not only this person. It's, it's not about him, he or she or they doing favor to you. It's also like really it, it needs to be a dialogue. So even if there is in this portfolio reviews, there is always this kind of question of power and who is presenting the work and who is kind of a judging it. But it like we can make it more like less hierarchical. So pull everything out of the mediator. And then pull everything out of your fellow artists. So work together, create your support support system. And rule three, then it's, it's for mediators, it's for curators that listen to artists carefully. So when you are in portfolio reviews, when you uh, work as many artists also work as curators, uh, listen to artists carefully, like uh, really, really focus on, on what they are saying. So consider everything as an experiment, rule four, that's yes. And then rule five, don't give up if you go to portfolio review, if you go to some studio, if visit, if you show your work and it doesn't get immediate response, don't give up. There are a lot of long tail effects that um, probably appear only after a year or two. At least that has happened to me that I, uh, a couple of years back, I went to like, I've been in tens or hundreds of portfolio reviews and it always takes time uh, when you have opportunity to work with some artists. But I have been working for many, even tens of artists that I've met in portfolio reviews. And then uh, go directly to rule seven, sometimes work slowly. That's good for all of us. Like sometimes there is no rush. It's also more ecological and sustainable to work slowly. And then rule eight, don't be afraid of analyzing what you have created. So don't be afraid of, of talking, of talk about your work. And uh, it doesn't mean that you're explaining your work, but it means that you have your voice and you, uh, you are using it. Myself, like uh, specifically, I, I, I feel a bit, oh, I don't like those meetings when an artist is coming and showing the work and saying that okay I uh, I give you all the freedom to uh, interpret my work oh, I have it already so use your opportunity to talk about your work and then we go directly to this last like helpful hints always be around come or go to everything so maybe it's now when when we are more or less in front of our screens. It's easier to, uh, you don't need to fly, you can go and you can attend discussion, you can, you can ask people, it's really easy to write and chat and ask people, be present. And then something which was already discussed that act responsibly, use your, sorry, I, I have, yeah. Apply quotas when you are in power and change things. So when you are in, in a position that you do decisions, remember that this is like it's a moment when you can really change things. So at the moment when, when uh, I'm curating our festival, we, we are very precise that we have like an equal representation of men and women, and also we try to pay as much as attention people with different backgrounds. So not that everyone is like the same socioeconomic background or same skin color. So this kind of a diversity of people who have been, who have, uh, who if you work with or you promote, this is very important when we want to change the art world more equal. 
Yes, so that was what I had to say at this point. So maybe I just repeat again that don't think that promoting your work is, is only for yourself. It's, it's for all of us. It's like when you are promoting yourself, it usually promotes all the artists. Thank you very much, Anna Kaiser. Thank you to all, all of you for those presentations um, and lots of helpful advice there. So, um, so there's some questions coming up in the panel and um, I'll um, open those up in a minute, but I wanted to just pick up on something which, uh, you know, I think maybe you were all touching on, which was about, about collectives and about um, a kind of, a, you know, support, a support network. Um, so, um, you know, you know, I, th I talk to the students quite a lot about about the nest, the, the need um, in ordinary times, and particularly in these of of um, you know supporting each other to make work and to get the work out there and to have a bit, a bit more power as a group. Um, and you know, I was also I was thinking about the Manantai Collective, um, who, who after they left in Finland, who after they left art college, they they met every Monday. <laughs> Manantai is Monday, um, and then they made work as a group. And in fact, they just I think they just gave the work or the exhibitions just the group name and, and not individual. They didn't even say who was it. Um, you know, so it was a very um, group spirited thing. But um, so it, kind of in conjunction with that, and there's um, a couple of questions there about about um about collectives um do you think you know how do you feel about working with collectives as as curators um and somebody said um can you you know can a collective representing various photographers approach galleries um you know will you work with them or only as individuals so that's for anybody Absolutely, I, I think it's. I think it's 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 super advice there from Adakaiza. I think it's really essential. It's really tough to establish um, a career as an artist. You're you have to be so many things. You have to be so multi talented. You have to be. You're almost like a sole trader, an entrepreneur, your own promoter, your own critic, your own administrator, your own supporter. You're, it's just really tough. So there's a whole, and and you 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 come out expecting the world to come to you from college. And it doesn't always. So I think you have to come to terms with working nice. So I think it's it's and I and I don't want to be gendered about it, but I'm wondering, are men slightly better at promoting themselves and do women work better collectively? Just just a, just a thought, um, but I think it's really great. I mean, when we have group tours in, it's something we always mention from collectors, because I think Anna has mentioned something really important about this notion of curators as gatekeepers. You know, we've all got jobs to do and, we, we, you know, and, and we're limited in, in terms of, of like by physical resources and budgets. We can't show everything we'd like to show. So, you know, and you don't want to be you don't want a power balance. So it's often easier for artists as they establish them to form a group. And I think it's great if they if they create, which changes the power balance from their position because they see what curation is. It, it, it literally means to care. So they see what's involved with that and it demystifies it or it just gets you kind of up to speed with what, what is involved in it. So you're maybe less afraid then of approaching careers. And also it's more of a, a level playing pitch. So I think it's a really good way to upset the power structures that can be a little bit linear at times. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely would encourage that. I think it's really important. To add a little bit to okay. that, um, we found that, um, especially with the work that we do, um, many of the photographers within the region are going to get more traction or going to get out there more if um, they do work um, in t like within a collective versus going it alone because then it gets even a bit more expensive and a bit more time constraining. Um, so uh, definitely if you can partner up with a collective and just to get a leg up, um, definitely go for it. Mm -hmm. I think I think post COVID as well. I mean, that's why I, in my presentation I, sh I showed so many um, COVID examples because I think we've all had to switch rapidly. This is a really all that all those ways of getting you right that that we're seen as supporting mm -hmm. your practice actually became the main conduit. And I think it's you know 
in some ways it's 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 been okay for photography because so many more people are experiencing the world through screens and photography works well on screens but I think and I think one of the questions that came through was asking are galleries becoming obsolete for, for us I think that you can't beat the imperfection of the in real life experience you know screens can be glossy and screens can can make everything look beautiful but there's something different about that intimacy and that imperfection of the framed work, that commitment you have to make. So I think for artists working collectively can help you deal with that real life thing away from the screens. You know, you can be you can be sharing your things on screens and doing all and it's marvelous. But I think behind that in the real world, those those collectives will support you in formulating your ideas, in editing, which is perhaps mm -hmm. the most crucial thing of anything when it comes yeah. to doing to 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 what finalizing your work the you know and and i think also it can be very difficult difficult to maintain your resilience if you're getting rejection and it's the same for curators too there's so many things we we try for that we can't do due to you know funding restriction or whatever so so resilience and failure and risk are so much easier if you've got a collective if you've got support because it's it's tough something that uh which is now like at this post covid or covid world which really worries me in terms of this young young artist promotion is that like all the informal gatherings and this kind of uh, having beer having coffee having like it, after this panel in belfast definitely we would have gone and have a beer and then we would have chat and then we we get to know each other and then we okay we we can work together and then you kind of sense the kind of chemistry and they, these are great women so okay let's do something together but that is then we like now in front of our screens we turn off our laptops and then we are in our pajamas at home and and that's because I would say that as important as going to portfolio reviews is to go to those festivals and be with other people and like uh, be informally talk about your work, have conversations, and that's it's it's kind of a um, it's gonna be there and be one of the one of the group, and that's something that has changed very much now. And even if, like, I totally agree, and which is great now, this kind of a uh, geographical distances are kind of a uh, non-existence, mm -hmm. and also this like a uh, less hierarchical people can meet without uh, like a uh, e like a uh, like we are meeting here pretty easily, but it's very different to the meeting meeting live and and also this kind of all kind of informal chit chat and talk and real conversations which mm -hmm. which is which are really really difficult to do in online and that's also part of how you get to know people and how people get to know about young artists ideas and and it's not only about the, the images and the work yeah, yeah that's that's something Mike, michael raised in his notes was you know the importance of the personal contact you know it's 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 beyond the work you want to work with people you enjoy working with so you know the basic things of if you're approaching um someone for an opportunity don't be too desperate for attention hold your power hold your dignity <laughs> um but use your manners as well you know um if you want somebody to meet you make an appointment don't just walk in and expect that people you know, treat people the way you'd like to be treated yourself. I think that's mm. the main thing. Use your common sense. But, you know, it's, it's you know, you, you do need to plan things. Mm. Sorry. Um, just to... Go ahead. Yeah. Um, just to go back to what you were saying about um, the exhibition space and how it's very important um, mm. and relevant to as a world of networking. Um, I... In my experience, it has happened um, during some of the exhibitions that we've had that um, photojournalists or photographers have connected with writers and uh, 
or other fellow photographers and actually decided to work on projects together and you know just using their individual networks to help each other out as well and that is kind of missing um with this whole COVID situation but again um we still have sessions where you know people can meet online but it's it, it's not the same that's a mm. bit lacking and I don't, i'm not sure how to bridge that gap unfortunately mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think <laughs> that was, there was quite a lot of bleakness in that, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I think I have, um, you know, I, re I, mean, I really believe in, you know, in, in kind of the power of, the, of, of students and, um, you know, kind of younger people um, who, who are, it's not necessarily um, the same thing, um, you know, in, in, in their collective thinking, in the, in the dialogue that they, you know, because they're engaging in dialogue about how to do this, to a much greater extent, probably, than maybe you know each, each of each of us or each of you are you know in institutions who have other things to think about as well. So I think that you know that they will come up with with new ways you know that to you know a, a paradigm shift to kind of move things move things around. So I'm I'm quite hopeful about them. Um, I just want to follow up with um, Trish. You said something about resilience. Uh, you know and the um, collective and there's a really really good question here um, how to deal with criticism that your topics are not relevant because they're um, white men and this is a BIPOC person BIPOC woman and how to still break through if you're considered niche or not relevant ouch um, I notice in a lot of competitions the jury is mostly white and male and the winning topics are things that speak to them oh god yes That was for Trish, no? Was that was for me? Anybody. anybody. <laughs> oh, no, no, anybody, anybody. Uh, I, I'll go then. I, I think it's really good that there are quotas. I think Anna Kaiser mentioned this. I think it is good to have quotas. I mean, a lot, it's interesting. A lot, of, there are a lot of curators in photography are women. And I think that we're quite mindful of the need to be much more to check our privilege and to be much more representative. Yeah, I'm muted. Am no. I? No. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, quotas are really complicated things, but at this point, I really believe in them because I, I consider them as, as kind of a tool that before the art world and photographic world is more equal we need quotas but the problematic thing is that it's also when you have quotas you need to assume too many things like how how can i assume that someone is considered like she as she as a woman or this is a it's it's not easy and it needs to be discussed through all the time but i think that if we don't set up any kind of quotas it things will not change and we have to, and, and also I, I, would, I would really encourage people who consider them uh, being in minority or like underrepresented to come and talk to curators. And, and also like uh, don't be shy of telling that, have you noticed that I belong to this group or my friend belongs to this group and, and we are not represented here because uh, also this like uh, too often i hear like when when i'm asking someone why don't you have any women in your kind of uh if your panel or in your exhibition they are saying that no 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 we are not paying attention to gender balance you know no we are not paying any attention to gender because we are just paying attention to quality and that's most insulting that you can imagine because then then the quality is something which is set up by the really really tradition which is so uh, dominated by white male usually heterosexual photographers so never take this that the quality is not enough and uh, and uh, I I would really really go for quotas as long as it's needed. Stella? Um, I, I do agree that quotas are necessary and I mean I am um, currently 
or I, I'm working with people who would never really always the time all the time they kind of hold back on applying to certain or for certain festivals or um, awards because they always feel like they are not there yet or they you know they feel like oh I will oh, I'll make a fool of myself so um in a way I, I, I think I always say push beyond that lack of self-belief and just go for it but on the other hand also just kind of keep a lookout on because right now so many um platforms are changing the way they are doing things because there's a lot of talk on how to change um the status quo and just so just keep a lookout and do your research see who is out there who you can yeah. reach out to what works more towards what you are doing because there's a lot that's also happening you just sometimes need to find it um we I know people are talking about us promoting ourselves, but uh, we try to put as much information out there for the people who do follow us on our social or whatever, because we feel like there needs to be a kind of sieve on what is out there and what um, works for different um, people and different, different platforms. So um, just keep an eye out on what works for you, honestly. I think that um, also goes a long way and just see what um, is more aligned to what you're doing. Um, I think someone said about a leveling of the playing field, and that's <laughs> was one of the notes I'd written down earlier. Um, because it seems like over the summer, the photography world kind of, or photography and art world um, in this in this part of the world anyway, kind of exploded and all sorts of ethical controversies. Um, generally, kind of old white men who had been doing things just the way they felt like doing things. And then there was a massive backlash. Um, and I, I don't even know how much of it they'd, I don't, I don't know that they'd even really seen the issues. So I think it was, yeah, I think maybe it feels to me like there's been a bit of a shift, um, which was very, very welcome. Maybe a slight disbanding of the old boys club. Um, um, yeah. It's a bit controversial. <laughs> anyway. Um, <let's> <laughs> So there were we're a all being of... very, very polite. <laughs> I know, you're being very good. People will just shoot me. Um, so there are a couple of questions then about connecting with curators. Um, and I know Anna Kaiser was talking about, you know, students working together. Um, but, um, and, you know, people were mentioning portfolio reviews. Um, mm. uh, so are there any other ways you'd suggest of connecting with, with curators? I know Trish, you said about making appointments um, and being respectful. Yeah, but... I mean, we used to do it. We used to do that more regularly, and we just couldn't keep up with it because if you're going to do it properly, it's an hour out of your day, and we were ended up spending a day a week on it, and you, we didn't have the time because we're, you know, it's a small team, so it's not something that you can do as much as you'd like to. I think it's it's really useful if artists review each other's work. I think do that more as well, you know, but do make appointments, but you just need to leave quite a long lead in time, I think, for people. You know, um, I think one question there was, is it, you know, should you do a work in progress one? I think it's OK to do the odd work in progress portfolio review as your work develops, but don't do the full day doing the circuit, you know, because then you're promoting yourself with something that's not ready. So I think find somebody build relationships. I think it's back to that thing about relationships and networking. You know, you know, it is it is political with a small P. Get people get to know people and you'll do that by turning up and representing yourself and talking to people and being part of the community and when you have that standing people will appreciate your participation in programs and that puts that's where you establish relationships and that's where you can easily talk to somebody because you know them then say can you look at my work and that's the way to do it rather than the cold call straight in with we you know with somebody who's you've never seen in your space before. You know, I think, I think it's just down to the, the personal relationships. And also, uh, curators are sharing information among, uh, or we are sharing information among like uh, ourselves. So if, if I find someone's work very interesting, but it's not fitting into what I'm working at the moment, it's very, I of, often like to get some tips from my friends and colleagues and I also share works by artists that I find interesting but I, I for some reason or another can't work work just at this moment but I have a I have a bit 
like a problematic relationship with portfolio reviews because I think it's it's not really like fair way to fund festivals, for example, because like uh, at the moment, most often it's like a photographers are paying to mm. get portfolio, like uh, to show their portfolios and reviewers, they might not be paid, they might be paid not very much, but they are not paying. And I think it's not, it should not be way to fund festivals like uh, but maybe it could be good that also reviewers and photographers pay so it should somehow it could create more equal position or then no one pays of course then that mm -hmm. means that it, it really really the structure needs more money but I I think there would be some kind of we could rework the portfolio concept Mm. Um, also a bit because I, I don't like the idea that like I'm counting the minutes that like this person who is like a very start of his hers or they career is paying a huge amount of money my time and especially if I don't feel that I can cannot give any like super relevant feedback then then the kind of hierarchy, power hierarchy is, is very like a discomforting. Yeah. So if you have like if photographers, if you have ideas how to kind of rework that portfolio review concept, there are some tries like uh, time to time there are like, um, like for example, in Arles, Rencontre d'Arles, there is this official portfolio review, which is like a super expensive, but then there is a Bua Off, which is organizing basically free. It's really, you probably pay 10 euros, but then you need to queue for the meeting. And also reviewers are doing it for free. And, uh, and it's uh, at least I have met as interesting project there as in, or even sometimes even more interesting there than in, in official portfolio reviews. Um, there's a really good, thank you. There's a really good question here about um, the opportunities that were created quite, um, uh, you know, contemporary ones in COVID, of, you know, people reflecting on their COVID experience in the moment. Um, and, whether this rapid response could now be synthesized and to go to with something to go forward. Can I ask Stella? I know you, you were showing work which was relating very specifically to COVID. Um, well, in a way, yes, uh, because um, this need to share, while it's a bit, I found some of the ways that people are doing it a bit problematic. Um, we had to actually turn down a project um, because it would, of the way they kind of designed it. Uh, it was also about share your um, COVID stories. And I say, um, if you find the platform and it can get your work out there, um, you are aware that, you know, of the problematicness of it all, by all means, please um, just use the platform. I, I know sometimes it's a bit tricky depending on which platform that is being used, especially for stories coming from Africa, because there's always that whole, they have that kind of imagery that they really want all the time. And, you know, some people are kind of deviating away from always propagating that same uh, stereotypical work. Um, but on the other hand, if it seems true to what it is that you're share sharing and um, the opportunity arises, I would say just go for it. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll finish in five minutes. If there's more questions, please put them in. Um, uh, there's a question which is, I suppose, quite a quite a short one. Uh, are you, some tips for social media networking? Do you find DMs unprofessional? Is tagging photo festivals and galleries a good way or just annoying? 
I think if there's a reason to tag, but not just, you know, I mean, not just because you want attention, because it makes you look needy. You don't need, it's again, back to that power thing. It's, it's like, please like me. Um, so, you know, I think if, if you're interested in an organization, follow them, comment, you know, get involved with dialogues if they're, if they're sharing work, get involved with the conversation, you know, get in there, contribute, not just hope to, you know, tag somebody and have something come back. You know, and I think if, if even on social media, you notice the people that you start to form conversations with people, you get to know people online. So I think, again, it's that bigger voice and, 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 and on that level playing rather than tagging somebody and hoping that they'll just come back because, you know, and the same with DMs. I'm re I'm not the best at checking my Instagram messages. I always forget. Yeah. Um, so with so many platforms, it's like, um, but I'm not a good point in case, but I'm not, I'm not reliable. Good old fashioned email is yeah. really good. And I think that's, that's a point that people mention in terms of, you know, if, if you're on social media, you're, you're going to events, follow up, send people direct emails with attachments or, or even I think Man Michael mentioned, send something by post. That's a much better direct way. But when it's ready, you know, and so I think the DM thing for me, my bad, not so good at that. Sorry. I would also say that if like what comes to social media, uh, Kind of the connections that instead of tagging uh, start dialogue start commenting on projects like uh, that are shown on festival and and you don't need to say that i have this I, I would like to show you of course you can do that later but start showing your interests towards the what people are doing on that and what kind of a kind of a line the festival is following and so that and at least for us, it works very well. Um, I do agree that it has to be a bit more organic um, just to spark interest. And I think the problem that most several times people have is also just tagging without even doing their due diligence to see if the person that they are tagging is actually in line with what they are doing. Um, I've seen that happen quite a bit. And like all we have said, um, just join the conversation, make it a bit more organic. And if you are going to tag and show your work, just make sure that it is aligned to whatever conversation or whatever um, page that you are actually tagging. But DMs, like um, Trish said, uh, it gets a bit tricky. I try to you know, check uh, what's there, but most of the time um, email is always best. Just put your email and put a little bit of a teaser on what it is that you're working on or what it is that you want to share. Don't put everything forward. Um, you don't want to show your hand too much. Um, yeah. Pitch, 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 pitch. Thank you. <laughs> I, I suppose email is kind of formal and taking yourself seriously. And social media is more casual and more chatty. And I think if you're taking your work seriously, which you should, I think the formal approach with a nicely crafted PDF or something like that. You know, and if you do portfolio reviews, it's often a, a good tip to follow up afterwards. If you had a connection, you know, if somebody you felt you didn't like them or you felt they didn't like you, don't bother. You know, there's, it's a very, photography is a very broad church. Not everybody's going to like your work. You've got to, and this is to go back to the resilience point, sod them if they don't, you know, but I think the most important thing is to, even with portfolio reviews, it's actually to hear yourself speak and to hone what it is you're trying to say with your work. And I think with photography, it's most basic is, are my photographs saying what I am telling people they are saying? And I think that all these things, it's back to you because it, it should be about you. And, and I think particularly when it comes to that question about you know the pale male and stale cliche, I think don't worry if, 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 if you're not getting that response, you might be a genius who's ahead of their time. You might not be, but you might be. So, um, you know, I think, it, you know, being balshy and, and kind of being a bit punk and an activist about it and having a politic is all what we need our artists to be. So just, yeah, keep at it. Fail, fail again, fail better. 
that's <laughs> something I'm, I'm quite practiced at. <laughs> can I, as we finish up, can I just ask each of you, and <laughs> I should have warned you this, but um, what is there something in photography that excites you as you look forward to 2021? Maybe projects or artists or work that is coming up or directions in photography or events and things? As we, we try and forget 2020 ever. <laughs> <laughs> One one thing I'd like to say is I think younger artists are brilliant at promoting themselves. They're so professional. They're so organized. They really have it together. You know, they're, they're, they, they can put together a good graphic presentation. They're confident. They're articulate. You know, and this is because the education, I think, for photography has got so good. So, like, there's, it's an incredibly um, kind of exciting time, I think, to work in photography. So I think that's really great and I think for, for us it's why we showed the, the social media thing with, with the new emerging diverse talents I think speaking from an Irish perspective we've been you know up until the last 20 years we've been kind of mostly Caucasian and now we've got a, a rapidly changing demographics so Ireland is now multicultural which is great um, so I think that that's it's really great now to see young artists from African, Irish, Chinese, Irish, whatever, Polish, Irish backgrounds, LGBTQ backgrounds coming through and making work. So that's what excites me. Um, I find it nice, like um, when uh, Trish says that the, edu the photography education is becoming so great. I'm like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, because um, most of the photographers who um, we work with are mostly self-taught because there's a bit of a gap in our education, mm. especially within the region, uh, Uganda specifically. Um, but personally, um, I, I do agree that there's a lot of young people coming out and I'm kind of excited with the shift that's happening. I don't know if it will still hold because um, a lot of conversation has come about, about inclusion and diversity and just being uh, affording more opportunity to um, African photographers. And I hope that holds into the 2021 because um, we are currently going into, a, we're having campaigns and elections are happening in, um, in January and I think a lot of work is going to a lot of um, focus is going to be on that and I hope that the news media houses out there can actually tap into the on the ground local talent that is in Uganda just you know to see that they tap into that to actually use them and hire them and give them the opportunity to actually show what they can do. Um, I hope that happens um, I'm actually looking forward to seeing if this shift actually holds into 2021. Thank you. I'm also looking kind of a very interesting, interested in seeing that what like a after hopefully after <laughs> COVID, like a, because now we have got used to use these opportunities as online presence, like online environments and and platforms offer, and this kind of a, especially this geographic accessibility and and uh, kind of a diversity that is unhierarchical and more diverse presence in, in discussions and presentations. So uh, it would be really interesting. I'm really interesting to see how how we could kind of uh, map or put these things together, have this kind of a physical exhibition and festivals and at the same time have these opportunities that is online offered us but like that is first thing and then another thing is that I'm I would really love to see Laia Abril's new work she has been working on the history of misogyny and uh, the abortion on abortion it was an exhibition that toured for a great deal and now she's she has been working on a rape and it was exhibited in France and it has been exhibited somewhere else. And I'm really interested in seeing that's how, how she um, managed to work on that, like uh, absolutely like really problematic topic and very difficult and sad topic. But I'm, uh, that's, that's what I'm interested. It's not very kind of a hilarious by like, uh, but it's, it's something I'm really interested in. 
Thank you very much. Thank you all of you. <laughs> I really enjoyed hearing your advice. Um, I think there's probably quite a lot that people can take away from it. Um, so thank you, Stella Nantongo, Trish Lam, Anna Kaiser Rassenberger, and thank you everybody who came along and listened <laughs> and for your questions. Thank you. And thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having us.